Last month, Arkansas Governor and former Trump Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders said it was her kids that kept her humble and then made the repulsive claim that Vice President Kamala Harris doesn't have anything doing the same for her, attacking Harris for not having any biological children of her own, even though she is a stepmother to her husband, Doug's two kids. Here's Harris's response on the Call Her Daddy podcast. I don't think she understands that um, there are a whole lot of women out here who, one, are not aspiring to be humble. I think that um, increasingly, you know, all of us understand that, you know, this is not the 1950s anymore. Families come in all kinds of shapes and forms, and they're family nonetheless. I'm joined now by Basil Smeichel, Democratic strategist and MSNBC political analyst, and Sammy Sage, co-founder of Betches Media and co-author of Democracy in Retrograde, How to Make Changes Big and Small in Our Country and in Our Lives. Sammy, welcome to the show. Uh, what do you make of that answer? And are women your age aspiring to be humble? I wouldn't say that that's the number one priority, but nor would I say that they see motherhood as the only thing that can make someone humble. I think that we've all had experiences in our lives that that builds our humility and that motherhood is not does not have a, uh, a complete ownership over that trait. Yeah. Well, let me let me ask you about this decision by v Vice President Harris to go on the Call Her Daddy podcast. I have to be honest, I, I had not heard of it before this weekend. Um, I'm new to knowing what it is. But for young women, it's very obviously extremely popular, it's like five million users. What do you think is the significance of doing that? And do you think that that's an effective way to reach particularly young white women? Because that is one of the goals is to increase the numbers of white women voters voting Democratic this time. Oh, absolutely. Not only do I think it's effective because of the volume and the scale, but I think that this is the, exactly the type of media that she should be doing, because we've heard from voters that they want to know more about her, that even though, you know, they've heard about her resume and they have, you know, heard her convention speech, they don't necessarily feel that they know her. And I think what I hear when people are saying that is that they want to have a greater intuitive understanding of who she is and who she will be as a leader, especially when you have her in contrast to Joe Biden, who's been in office since 1970, and J.D. Vance and Donald Trump, who will say anything, anytime, anywhere, no matter how true or outrageous <laughs> or evil. So, you know, she's up against... Um, you know, very candid people, and she's on this abridged timeline. And I think that one of the most effective ways that she's going to be able to reach undecided voters specifically is through individuals and personalities who people have parasocial relationships, because she needs mm -hmm. to spend this last month building trust. Not only that, but I think that that trust that she is able to build from those uh, from those appearances is going to pay off in a number of ways. One is that we're at a really... Um, quick point in the conversion funnel. So people can be listening to her on a podcast and they can be like, you know, I have time. I'm in my car. I might as well go to my polling place and vote early. And the second thing is that, as we can see, there's going to be a ton of disinformation around Election Day. And it is critical yeah. that she and the campaign build trust with voters now so that when there are lies flying everywhere, that trust will have been established with a large swath of the electorate. That's very smart. Uh, very smart thinking, Basil Michael. I think we, we have two Democratic strategists, or at least uh, political strategists, on tonight because those are some really smart points. I'm sure that you agree with. I'm just going to put up the whole sort of panoply of things that um, the vice president's going to be doing. 60 Minutes, Howard Stern, which is there was a big criticism that Hillary Clinton didn't go on the Stern show when she was running in 16. The View, the late show, Stephen Colbert. We love that show. Uh, and Univision, Town Hall. The, and of course, she did the Call Her Daddy podcast. Um, it, it is pretty smart. The audience data on Call Her Daddy, it's 70 percent women. 76% of them are under 35, 93% are under 45, 48% Democratic, 24% Republican, 20% Independent, 34% live in the South. Um, it seems pretty smart. Oh, it's a very st smart strategy. You know, much to my chagrin, many of my students, when I talk to them about me being on TV, they have no idea what I'm talking about, but yeah. they tell me their parents <laughs> love me. But their, their yeah. parents love me, um, so it's yes. really smart to go on to go where the voters are and go on the platforms that they're listening to. So yes, you do the podcast, um, yeah, you do the view, you do sixty minutes, but you also, you yeah. know, I, and I'm a big fan of going to local 
media, hyper local media, because when most of America gets up in the morning, they want to know what the traffic's like, what the weather's like, Weather. and what happened in their neighborhood. And if they yeah. if they see that Kamala Harris was in their neighborhood or talking to a local reporter, that will touch a voter, and particularly an undecided voter, um, and say, "Oh my God, she came to some place that resonates with me. Let me go out there." And, uh, and and go support her. So I, I love this strategy. And one quick point, Democrats should not engage in the hand-wringing that echoes Republican talking points about doing all of this media. They're saying it just so that they can find something to go after her with. She's doing yeah. the right thing and staying the course. And, and I wonder to last word to you on this, Sammy, because this is in a, you know, she's doing this in a context where the Georgia Supreme Court just reinstated a, a six week abortion ban, which is basically a total abortion ban. The Supreme Court let stand a ban in Texas that would let women essentially lose their organs or die or come near death um, in order to force them to give birth. You had the Montana candidate for the United States Senate, Tim Sheehy, say, well, let me see if we have time to do we have time to play it. Do we have time to play it real quick? Young people, listen, they've been indoctrinated for too long. We can't allow We don't even try to talk to them anymore. We don't even go to them and explain to them. I, I, I sat with a group of, of, of younger folks a couple of months ago talking about just various issues. And one of them was, was life, because, of course, young women between the age of 19 and 30, abortion is the, their number one concern. That's all they want to talk about. That's, they are single-issue voters. And it's all about pro-choice, pro-choice. Uh, they're all pro-choice, pro-choice. And Sammy Sage, I mean, this is the Florida governor is so threatened by an abortion rights amendment that he's threatening to prosecute stations that play in a pro-choice ad. I is that true? Are young women just so, are really super focused, hyper focused on abortion? And why wouldn't they be, given the fact that, you know, women's bodily autonomy is being stolen state by state? I think that this goes back to the pre pre Roe being overturned, where people assume abortion is about only about choice. And it's actually not. It's really about health. And I think that what we're seeing, especially when you see the stories coming out of Texas, is that this is not, this is really any woman who wants to get pregnant, who wants to have a family, they could ultimately be at risk for the severe health complications, including fatalities that will come from these abortion yeah. bans. So yes, it is yeah. the choice, but it's also... The, it's also the life and death consequences that come from That's not right. having this autonomy. So single issue, yeah. sure, but yeah. it's the, your being. <laughs> I think the single issue, exactly, is, is control of your own being. That is the single issue. Uh, you all were terrific. Thank you very much. Sammy Sage, Basil, Smichael, thank you both. And before we get to break, back in 2020, I hosted a podcast from MSNBC and Wondery called Kamala Next in Line. It explores then-Senator Kamala Harris's background and tells the stories that shaped the woman we know today. The series will be available ad-free for MSNBC Premium subscribers on Wednesday morning. So be sure to scan that cute little QR code on your screen to subscribe to MSNBC Premium right now so that you can listen ad-free when it drops first thing Wednesday morning. And be sure to follow How to Win 2024. That is where you'll find it. We'll